Hi guys, today I want to design a SEPIC. Uh, the SEPIC is basically, um, it's like the back boost, so the, the output voltage can be uh, higher or greater than the input voltage, but uh, it has not, but the, the polarity is not inverted, because uh, in a back boost you have the inverted polarity, and uh, in most of the, of the cases you don't want that. So the first thing that we're going to do is to generate the PVM. How can we do that? Dot param d equal to 0 0.5 and dot param d equal to f switch equal to 250 kilohertz. Since we have a low converter, low power converter. Now uh, let's uh, let's use the. Um, this will be just a, a low side. A low side PVM because the the SEPIC has the advantage to not have. A high side configuration so let's just use the pulse and uh, between 0 and 5 volts uh, 0 delay 1 nano 1 nano and uh, the period in which it's on is d over fs and the period of course is uh, 1 over f switch uh, so the advantage of the sepic is that first it has uh, it has not the high side switch and uh, uh, polarity of the output is positive uh, so this is uh, a very big advantage but the disadvantage is that you have to use another inductor and uh, a capacitor here and uh, this is not very beautiful because this inductor are heavy bulky and also expensive so you don't uh, employ so much this uh, this configuration for this reason most of the time you will use a back boost or a cascade back boost so let's put 10 volts the filter capacitance right there and let's put an NMOS with just our low side low side PWM um, come on uh, what is it? let's just write a less please oh thank you so now we have to use uh, another MOSFET for this, for for instance the first on the list. Let's put just a micro, the micro there, and the micro there. You need also a shotkey diode right there with the cathode towards the load. So let the, let's just use a shotkey diode. The output capacitance as a filter, 50 micro should be enough, and let's draw a ohmic load of one ohm so let's call this node output voltage let's call this load uh, this uh, this node switching node and let's call this node um, vc because this is the node that we want to see uh, so let's run the simulation for uh, 10 milliseconds it should be enough so let's see what what is going to happen in these nodes First, let's verify that uh, with a duty cycle of 0 0.5, the output voltage should be near the input voltage. Hmm, yes, it, it is uh, exactly as we planned. So the switching node... This is not, by the way, the switching node. <laughs> so these are the typical waveform of the, of the SEPIC. You see that uh, I'm going to drive this MOSFET with a uh, PWM low side, so you don't need the high side configuration. Now, if you check the stress of the capacitance, you see that this capacitance is very stressed, and the car and also the current flowing into this capacitance is very high. So you need the also this capacitance will be heavy, bulky, and expensive because it has uh, a very high stress. If you wanted to check this value without using always the 
the connector, just use the variable of voltage like right there, a grounded variable of voltage which in which you write uh, basically the differential output as uh, V switch minus V VC. And this will be uh, the output of uh, this will be the, the stress of the capacitor. In which you have to check for a, a CPIC converter, because if this capacitor is dead, basically you won't have nothing. Whoa! Stop! 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 I hate when I let these pies go. Come on! Okay, so this is the current of the. This is the, the stress current of the, the capacitor. Let's check, let's check the currents of the inductors. As you can see, there are these are the waveform of a, of a CP converter. And um, you should have that uh, the waveform of the, of the diode plus the waveform of the drain of this MOSFET should give, uh, yes, should give the waveform of the inductor here. Now, why is not that? Because the lattice pi is, is dumb and you have to put a minus right there. And you see that uh, this plus this is gonna have basically the double. So if you add these two waveform, L1 plus IL1, what you're gonna have in the blue waveform is exactly the sum of the two split waveform between the between the switch and the, uh, the diode. Uh, the beautiful thing about the SEPIC is that it can, as I said at the beginning of the video, it can go higher or lower than the input voltage. And how can you do that? Well, it's very simple. You have to modify the duty cycle. If it is beyond 0 0.5, you see that the output voltage will be higher than the input voltage with a positive polarity. If you go, if you use instead a duty cycle which is under 0 0.5, for instance 0 0.3, the output voltage will be lower than the input voltage itself. You can you can even check this uh, by basically by basically also uh, also seeing the by by seeing that uh, you see that uh, when I modify the duty cycle, uh, the the slope here is higher than the slope to the right of the inductor. And uh, that's because uh, your, the inductor basically takes this, this input voltage right there and it, uh, it basically does the derivative. And so you're, you're going to see that also the slope of the inductor will modify accordingly. Now, if you raise the, the, switch in, the switching frequency to 50 kHz, for, for instance, what you expect here at the output voltage is a reduction of the ripple because the, uh, the ripple is uh, inversely proportional to the, to the switching frequency, but you have to be careful because the higher the switching frequency and also the higher will be the higher the will be the, um, the, the losses. So if you, if, you, if, you, if you write dot step param uh, x, uh, no, let's not do that, just put uh, 50 kilohertz, you see that if you, I lower that drastically, the, the ripple will be much higher. So in low power system, you want this frequency also to, to be basically one megahertz. And with an higher capacitance, oh, wow. I, I, um, in a light spice, you have to, you have to write one meg. Otherwise it, it, he will, uh, it is a milli. <laughs> Sorry. I killed my, I killed my DC DC converter. So you see that if I put one megahertz and the most integrated circuit, you have one megahertz as switching frequency with a, a reasonable high capacitance right there. You don't have ripple to worry about. Uh, still, what you're going to do if you really want to, to, uh, to be sure and to be, to be safe, you have to take this output voltage and do the FFT. So let's do that. View the FFT or the output voltage and you see that you still have some noise around the around the megahertz and it's re reasonable enough to have uh, this noise because at one megahertz uh, you have the switching frequency and this in the, this noise uh, must be attenuated with low pass filter and uh, and whatsoever uh, 
you can also use the the linear and you won't see nothing <laughs> so let's put again the the decibel so let's put uh, for instance here a low pass a low pass filter let's just use a pi filter so let's just use uh, i'm putting really random values 10 micro not so random by the way so uh, these are reasonably enough values for our dc dc converter this is a uh, pi filter now let's check the uh, so this will be the output voltage and this will be the output voltage but filtered if i am um, i'm doing this without uh, any design so um, based also only on my experience if i'm doing this correctly it should be the the, the ripple should be lower let's just use a uh, less switching frequency for instance 200 kilohertz let's stop the simulation let's run again the simulation oh yes you see that uh, there is the ripple and there is the attenuated ripple now let's check both this waveform on the fft so view fft yes i want to see these two okay oh exactly as we wanted you see that uh, the all the switching noises here uh, have been basically attenuated so uh, this is uh, what happened uh, basically with a pi filter you can uh, recheck again the simulation if we are not sure of what we are seeing maybe because there was some noise before but let's run again the simulation just to be sure of what i'm seeing view fft and okay okay and nothing happens uh, yes i want to see this too oh no 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 it was uh, exactly right so the, the blue waveform is the output filter and as you can see all the switching noise has been basically dumped out and uh, this is a, a very very great thing but uh, be careful that uh, around this around here there is a little bit of resonance maybe uh, introduced by the pi filter you can smooth this resonance uh, maybe adding uh, some uh, some resistors i don't know i'm 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 just hypothesizing by hypothesis i don't know if it's if it is still gonna work but let's try again maybe you will dampen out that resonance right there so let's check the fft again okay okay oh i didn't select nothing come on okay no it is worse <laughs> no no it is worse because yes the the, the resonance here has uh, has disappeared but uh, uh, all the spikes here have basically returned because I am at, uh, I am basically attenuating the um, the filtering power. So it is still filtering in the higher frequency, but uh, uh, I filtering I'm dumping in too much, and these uh, spikes are still present. So 10 ohm maybe is uh, a lot. Let's put just one. Let's put just. Uh, uh, it should be no. Uh, 10 ohms, 100 ohms. I'm just basically playing with these values, so it is uh, it has not some real impact on what I'm doing. But basically, you wanted to put uh, you wanted to put a filter or also a, a arena or also a, a arena regulator. Let's run again. They are still present. <laughs> it's still worse. <laughs> Lol. Okay. Uh, so let's just put this filter there. Stop the simulation and let's use this filter. So view the FFT. The filter, the end filtering is done. Thank you. <laughs>